We are being joined by Dr. Gilbert Doctorow, International Affairs Analyst, Author and Historian. Sir, welcome to the show. My pleasure. As I mentioned earlier, Kim Jong-un is in Vladivostok. How do you assess the significance of this trip and how do you think Western powers would react to the apparent warming of ties between Russia and North Korea? Well, the trip to uh, Vladivostok is not done in isolation. Uh, hardly anyone in Western media has talked about the context, and I would like to do that for just a moment. The context is that he is arriving uh, at the uh, second day in the, of the, uh, the Eastern Economic Forum in Vladivostok, to which hundreds of guests uh, have arrived. Most of the contingents are from Russia itself, but there also are some very important uh, foreign guests, including the, the vice president of Laos, who was on the dais today, and the, the vice premier of Myanmar. The point is that the Russian government is there in strength. Therefore, the meeting between uh, Kim and Putin is more than a meeting of two leaders. It is clearly a meeting of delegations. The Russians have in Vladivostok, for the purposes of the ongoing forum, a very large team of uh, ministers uh, responsible for fields that will be necessarily part of the discussion. And I don't mean the, just the minister of uh, the ministry of of, of uh, defense. I mean also uh, those responsible for logistics, for example, the railways. Those responsible for uh, for infrastructure projects of all kinds. Those responsible for agriculture and other topics that are likely to come up in the discussions between the delegations from uh, from North Korea and from Russia. So the context is one set for a very for a comprehensive um, discussion of North Korean Russian relations, not narrowly focused on one subject, uh, what who's going to buy what in military hardware. But if I can step back uh, and look at that separate question, which has been the focus of attention in the West, uh, the notion has been that the Russians are dependent on North Korean supplies of additional artillery shells and uh, that they're possibly looking at medium range ballistic missiles right. for which uh, North Korea is a major supplier. Uh, that is part of the story and I will get to that. But I think it's all being put in the wrong background. It's being put uh, in the, on the assumption that Russia needs these urgently for its ongoing war in Ukraine. I don't believe that's the case. Right. I believe we're talking about long-term supply. Uh, right. So, in fact, I was just going to come to this, as you rightly mentioned, a potential arms deal is high on the agenda. And, in fact, I was just trying to understand what would be the practical implications if such a deal does go through. Russia is preparing for war with NATO. That's the implication. The Russians don't need these supplies for the ongoing war in Ukraine. They're doing just fine. However, upon concluding agreements with North Korea on these medium-range ballistic missiles, for which North Korea is said to have among the most advanced equipment in the world, and on agreeing for a uh, supply of artillery shells, the Russians will be better positioned to pursue a major offensive against Ukraine in coming months. What do I mean? We already know in, from news released by the Russians two days ago that they have brought up to the front uh, large numbers of Iskander, their, hi their hypersonic uh, strike missiles. These were used very sparingly till now. And the reason is that Russia, uh, unlike NATO, has been careful to prepare for a follow-on uh, follow uh, expansion of this war to um, beyond the frontiers of Ukraine to a NATO-Russia war. Western Europe has, uh, has um, given to Ukraine a vast amount of what armaments they had in storage and, frankly speaking, has demilitarized itself voluntarily. The Russians have not done that. They've been very sparing in application of their most advanced equipment, whether it be these Iskander hypersonic missiles or their latest T-90 most okay. advanced tanks, and the Russians are are going to buy from North Korea what they need for the future, not what they need for the present. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so now, 
in fact this comes at a time when both nations are extremely isolated on the in the global realm uh, in the international realm of course what do russia and north korea stand to gain from this meet and a potential arms deal you've explained that russia is preparing for war with nato what would you say north korea stands to gain well let's put this again in a, a review who needs whom it's widely assumed that russian chinese relations uh, russia is the junior part partner and china is the uh, the senior partner that's erroneous <laughs> they both need one another very much for slightly different reasons for uh, for uh, i won't go into that but with north korea the same question comes up who needs whom more they both need one another russia has uh, military te technologies which the north koreans want these include uh, technologies in submarine warfare, in electronic warfare, and it is conceivable that the Russians will share some of this. They also have um, have uh, uh, airplane, jet fighter technologies, which could be very interesting to the North Koreans. So North Koreans stand a lot to gain in the military sphere if they establish a proper trading relationship with Russia. They also, of course, in the general economic sphere, have to gain from the Russia's potential supplies of crucial materials, that is, first of all, oil and gas to, um, to North Korea, and uh, then um, the, the um, agricultural products. We know very well that, that North Korea has had a difficult time uh, finding supplies, agricultural supplies, to satisfy the needs of its domestic population. Uh, for Russia, the, helping them out in this way is no problem at all. And, right. for, and lastly, there is hard currency reserves, which Russians can buy some of these armaments with hard currency, which is very much in the interests of North Korea. All right. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us on Vion with your perspective on this. Thank you for having me. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.